Hello, this is uh, another watch review. Um, of a, a very special watch, in my opinion, the Blanc Pan uh, 50 Fathoms, uh, which is a model that was released in 2008. Um, this particular model that I'm going to show you is from 2011. Um, the watch is currently in production, it's still being sold, uh, and it retails in the UK at uh, £10,080. Um, the way I'm going to do this video is show you some pictures of some vintage style um, 50 fathoms, because this, this watch now is, this variant uh, of this watch has been produced now for over 50 years. So we'll show you some pictures of some older ones and show how it's changed over the years. And then of course, uh, I'll talk about the, the modern version which I've got. So the, the 50 Fathoms, um, if they are to believe, the manufacturer to believe, uh, they were the first company to produce um, the very first diving watch, um, which again was the, the 50 Fathoms. Uh, in, in essence, this model was released before um, the Rolex Submariner and Amiga Seamaster. So it, it is quite an iconic piece, um, you know, not very popular uh, because people aren't that familiar with the brand, I don't believe, but um, nevertheless, a very special piece in my eyes um, and very, very iconic. Uh, the history books tell us that um, in 1952, uh, French combat swimmers, um, were obviously working on behalf of the French government um, as an elite team of, of tactical soldiers, um, essentially they were sort of the Navy SEALs of France, if you like, um, back in the 50s. Uh, and they asked for a watch um, that could be used to dive. Uh, and Blanc Pan, Blanc Pain, <laughs> um, produced this watch and it was commissioned by them. Um, we've got a few variations here. We have the, the no radiation dial from 1966, uh, a mil spec model um, with a humidity indicator. Um, which was a demo during the early 50s through to the 70s. And there have been over 20 different models um, that have been produced from this 50 Fathoms, uh, including one uh, that was worn by uh, Jacques Cousteau um, during the 1956 Cannes Film Festival. He was seen to, uh, to wear a 50 Fathoms. Um, so yeah, clearly very iconic. Uh, a 1970s Techni Sub model was adopted by the Israeli German a Swedish, Norwegian, Danish, um, Finnish, and most famously American fighting forces. Uh, the Americans had a buy American policy at the time for all of their units, so no watch um, could show the blank pane or blank pawn uh, logo on the dial. It was it was never going to be allowed. So an American company named Torneck Rayville took the 50 Fathoms and rebranded it. Um, and these models, I believe, were, were mostly destroyed um, by the Navy at the end of their commission. Uh, and it goes without saying that these are very hard to find, um, extremely rare pieces that would go for tens of thousands of pounds if you had an original one. So that, that's a bit of history. Uh, moving on then to the latest edition, which is this one, um, the one I've got. It's 50 Fathoms 5015 Automatique, um, which was first introduced in 2008. Uh, 50 Fathoms, uh, the name is derived from the original version of this watch, which I've already mentioned, uh, dates back to the mid 20th century. This new version is a large piece, it is 45 millimeters in size, so yeah, it is relatively large. However, due to the short lugs um, and the strap, the sailcloth strap that you've got, this will fit most wrists. Um, back in 2008, when it was brought out, Larger watches were all the rage. I suppose they still are, but back then, you know, it really was a high point for for larger pieces being produced by watch companies. Um, and clearly, the 50 fathoms followed this trend. Uh, the bezel, as you can see, is quite special. It's made from sapphire crystal, so it's obviously extremely scratch-proof, uh, as is the, um, the face. Obviously, it's sapphire crystal. Um, but you can also see that the bezel is slightly curved. Um, which is really, really gorgeous and very unique to this watch. Um, and you can see the vintage style sort of timing bezel there and the dial, um, quite a minimalist design, it is really great and again timeless. In 30, 40 years, the design of this watch will still look great in my opinion. Superluminova 
um, has not only been applied to the dial but also the bezel. Uh, the loom on this watch is absolutely brilliant and is easily up there with any modern Rolex or Omega that, that I've had the pleasure of handling. Uh, the watch is water resistant to 300 meters, um, not 100 meters as the name suggests, 50 fathoms, but yeah, 300 meters. Uh, we have a date window at four, which is really nicely integrated into the dial. Uh, and the dial is very clean, and as, as I've said before, in my humble opinion, extremely attractive. The entire case is polished, which again is rare to find these days in divers' watches. Uh, and it is 15.5 millimeters thick, um, which again is relatively big uh, and is a similar thickness to um, a modern Rolex Seedweller um, SD uh, 4K. Very similar size, and I've done some clips here on my wrist, of my wrist which is just over seven inches, and I think it looks okay. Um, it's not a monster like a deep sea, but yet yeah, it is quite a, a thick watch. This watch also has a unique feature of being anti-magnetic. It has a soft iron core surrounding the movement. Again, this is a nice feature. It, it adds weight to the watch, which some people might not like. Um, and of course, the movement is all in-house made by Blank, blank Palm. Um, the movement itself is a calibre 1315. So the 1315 powers this watch. Um, and when fully wound, holds a staggering 120 hours power reserve so a five day power reserve on this which is absolutely fantastic the strap as I've mentioned is made from sailcloth which I found to be extremely durable um, and it, it looks great I've got a couple of different straps here the, the one that came with it was a sort of olive green color I've got a black one and this racing strap as well um, you can tell it's extremely durable the inside of the strap is made from rubber um, and I've just done a video in my sink putting some water on it uh, and although cell cloth does soak up some of the water it appears to dry off very quickly so you could um, you could easily use these straps to go diving in the sea or in the swimming pool or in the shower so a bit unusual to use cell cloth and I can imagine there's lots of people that uh, would not think about spending over £10,000 on a watch um, that comes on a sailcloth strap but there you go these are very unique uh, pieces and very very special you can grab them on the used market uh, for, for reasonable prices if, you, if you're lucky you probably get one sort of between five and six thousand pounds um, and you probably won't lose much on that um, and they are quite unique you know this one uh, number 285 um, so they engrave the back of each watch that they make. So clearly they don't make very many of them, which again is quite appealing to watch enthusiasts. Is it nicer than the sub? Of course, that's all subjective. It's certainly rarer and you're not gonna see these out, um, out and about with people wearing them. Um, you know, And if someone does recognize it, they're clearly gonna be a watch enthusiast. I thoroughly recommend this watch if you want a watch that is, you like the diver style and you appreciate military history um, and an iconic piece. If you want an iconic piece like a sub, consider this because it's very similar. Um, the quality I would probably say is probably a notch above a, a, a Submariner. Uh, the bezel is great, uh, the clicks on the bezel are fantastic. Very much like a sub, don't get me wrong, I don't want to bash Rolex because I love Rolex, but I have to say that. The manufacturing of this watch, is, when you hold it, it really is um, a very special watch. Not to everyone's taste, but um, in my opinion, a, a great choice for someone if they've got the money to buy one in the second-hand market. They want to be a bit different and buy a watch that's um, you're not your standard sub that you see everywhere. Um, that's a bit of an exaggeration, but you, you know what I mean. This is a great choice. And one thing I haven't really talked about is the um, is the box it comes in. Obviously, it's a, a really large box. You've got some manuals there which talk about the, the sort of history and the heritage behind the, the brand, and then um, sort of service documents when it gets sent off. They'll fill in those documents for you. So it's just nice. It's just um, a cut above really other brands. Like you, you don't get this sort of attention to detail with an Amiga or Rolex. 
Again, not bashing them because you know the, the boxes are really nice, especially the new Amiga wood boxes. Um, but it's just it's quite special this that it comes in this plexi case that you can see in the background there. Um, I have got a travel case as well, leather sort of travel case that it comes with. But yeah, attention to detail with all of that sort of stuff that comes with the what it is great. And as you can see there on my wrist, which is seven and a quarter inches, um, I think it looks okay, it looks fine, it's very, very comfy. Uh, the strap is fantastic. And the way it looks on the wrist is just gorgeous. I just can't put my finger on it, um, what it is, but it's, I think it's the, the sort of the sword hands and that sapphire curved bezel. You, you, know, you don't really see that design anywhere. I mean, the Amiga 225 bore, um, similar sort of hands, which I love, the sword, the sword hands. I love the fact that um, this 50 Fathoms has them. Um, the engraving on the side isn't to everyone's taste with the, the company's name on it. I quite like it. Um, some people might not. And as you can see here, the different strap options that you can go for um, give the watch a complete different look. Certainly the black one probably looks a bit more formal and the olive green that I'm using at the moment probably a bit more casual. One thing um, to be mindful of is these straps aren't cheap. I was lucky to get these straps thrown in with the watch but I'm, I'm pretty sure they set you back in well in excess of uh, 350 400 pound for a cell cloth strap which is um, extortionate really. Um, I was concerned about the servicing of this watch. Uh, there you go, there's a video of it in the water. Um, purely because I'd heard horror stories. However, I've emailed um, Blank Pond and they've been fantastic. The customer service has been brilliant and I was quoted £410 for a service, a basic service, which um, you can't quibble over. Right, thanks for watching and um, I hope you enjoyed the, uh, the video.